Back when we was in the car, 13 guns, no lie. We got more guns than we can handle. I got on a CTE shirt, got on my CTE chain, right? We in the car. It's about 100 niggas walking up. It's Jay Prince and them, Pimp C. They 100 deep. They at the back door. They, they walk past, because our trucks is right here. We had three trucks, but we didn't need all three because there wasn't nothing three of us, right? <laughs> so we had a truck in the front. It was our truck, and we had another truck. So we see all the niggas coming, right? So we tell we tell BB, his assistant at the time, we tell her, hey, you get in that truck to the drop, take you back to the room, right? That's what it is. We don't know we on some shit because we don't know what might happen. You feel me? So she get in the truck behind us. We tell her, go to the room. Go to the room. When we make it there, you will see us. If we don't, you know what to do. We either locked up or something. So she leave. So they at the back door. They deep, cuz. They ain't number three of us. Everybody know this. He ain't, Jeezy wasn't no real gang member. Jeezy got money. You know what I'm saying? He got money. He was with the shit. I ain't saying he was a sucker because he wasn't a gang member. But he wasn't a real member. He wasn't somebody that wore around in khakis and had the rag hanging out of his pocket and goddamn had Chuck Taylor's on and shit. It wasn't him. He might wear that shit for concerts or doing it on stage, but that wasn't him. You gotta think about a nigga like him that said they been getting money for that long. They ain't had to wear no dickies and shit. You feel me? Like, Kinky them said they been had they was nigga, they they've been mean there since teenagers. That's crazy. So just think about it. That's crazy, man. Man, you, you made a statement. I, the reason I was asking you about the over here is because that featured Bun B, but at one point in time, you know, Jeezy and Pimp C, you know what I'm saying, had like a disagreement oh, Pimp C behind, shit. behind the whole like 17.5 and how Pimp man, C was crazy. coming out kind of like questioning the authenticity, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, and all of that. And uh, it kind of, it didn't really go too left though, but you know, Pimp C was outspoken. Right, right. And Jeezy, I think, got his respect for Bun. He didn't really jump out. Yeah, the we really like never this. jumped out the window. But what's your thoughts on that? And you was around but, that time. But you got, yeah. But I was, but that shit was. You gotta understand, Pimp C a legend. Bun be a legend. UGK. I love them niggas. You feel me? I love Bun. I've been around Bun plenty of times. You feel me? And it's and UGK. They they was they been them niggas. So when he did that, it kind of hurt niggas. It even hurt Jeezy. It hurt a lot of niggas. It was like, damn, not Pimp C. Not Pimp C hating too. Talking about 17-5, ain't no way and all this and all this. But obviously, he must have talked to some people about it. And they told him, like, no, nah, nigga. No. Nah. Jeezy, no. Nah. He said 17-5. Believe him. And, you know, at the time of that beef, we niggas at the mid at the midst of that beef, we had a concert, nigga, in Texas, in Houston, right? I don't know why, I don't know what was going on, but we usually roll deep, right? But I guess Jeezy was on some shit like I don't wanna roll deep, cause I don't want them niggas to think we coming for a problem, you feel me? We ain't even worried about that Pimp C shit. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't roll deep when we went to that motherfucker. It was just me, him, um, I think a girl named, the, the, his assistant named BB at the time, and one security guard, right? Right, but we had 13 guns. 13 guns, you might think I'm capping. We had more guns than we could shoot in the truck with us, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And that's, and that's, and that's another thing why I be talking shit and saying certain shit, cause niggas really put their life on the line about this shit, man. Like niggas could have died, did anything with the jail for life, anything about this CTE shit. And that's why I'm coming out of my story now, cause I don't like how shit ended for us when we were so loyal. So, so back when we was in the car, <laughs> back when we was in the car, 13 guns, no lie. We got more guns than we can handle. I got on a CTE shirt, got on my CTE chain, right? We in the car. It's about a hundred niggas walking up. It's Jay Prince and them, Pimp C. They a hundred deep. They at the back door. They, they walk past, cause our trucks is right here. We had three trucks, but we didn't need all three cause there wasn't nothing three of us, right? <laughs> so we had a truck in the front, it was our truck, and we had another truck. So 
we see all the niggas coming, right? So we tell we tell BB, his assistant at the time. We tell her, hey, you get in that truck, tell the driver, take you back to the room. Right? That's what it is. We don't know we on some shit. Cause we don't know what might happen, you feel me? So she get in the truck behind us, we tell her, go to the room. Go to the room. When we make it there, you will see us. If we don't, you know what to do. We either locked up or something. So she leave. So they at the back door. They deep, cuz. They ain't number three of us. I'm talking about they deep. Big niggas, too. Big. I'm talking about they deep. But ain't nobody scared. I don't know if my security was scared, but we would. I mean, Jeezy was. So we got, no lie, we got 13 guns right here just spread. So we just in the truck chilling. So I tell G, I'm like, fuck, I'm like, I'm like, fuck it, no lie, right hand the guy, nigga say I'm lying or whatever. G, I, if you ask him, he say I'm lying. He's a fucking fool, nigga. I put a desert eagle in my drawers, nigga. Hey, I said I'm about to get down and check the temperature. I got a CT channel and my CT shirt. So I get out, I get out the truck, boom, shut the door. They looking back, but you know I'm just acting like I'm on the phone talking, right? Just trying to see what the next move going to be. So they looking, but ain't nobody doing nothing. Next thing I know, here comes somebody from the club. They come to our truck. It was like, hey, man, Pimp C and them, Jay Prince and them right here, they want to get in. And Jeezy's like, let them in. What, what you coming to tell me for? They paying, ain't they? Let them in. But see, everybody know about the beef that was going on, right? So I guess Jay Prison had fucked around and paid for the whole upstairs VIP too. So they go in. So ain't no problem, because if it was a problem, they would have did it right now. I just jumped out the truck. I got my CT chain on, CT shirt. But you know, so we get in the club, no lie. As soon as we get in the club, Jeezy go on stage. Nigga, we kind of stood there. Everybody stood there just looking, like me, him, DJ. We just like, the fucking club is all messy. All Spanish folks, cuz. I'm talking about Spanish, Mexicans every fucking where. They throwing crack on stage, weed on stage, cell phones on stage, money on stage. No lie. We kicking the shit back out in the crowd, cuz. Nah, no lie. Man, Jeezy do the song when he when he addressed Pimp C. And he tell the DJ, when I say this part, cut the shit off, nigga. Cut the beat off on a cappella. Here come the part, Jeezy cut it off. 17-5, yeah, nigga, I said it. 17-5, yeah, nigga, I meant it. Nigga, they go crazy in that bitch. <sighs> they go crazy. And then, shit, we got off stage, went home, shit. There wasn't no issue. There wasn't no and issue. PMC was in the building. Yeah, PMC was in the building. And, as a matter so of fact, Jay after PMC that, after that, before PMC died, he was trying to reach out to Jeezy. Jeezy wouldn't take his calls. And he ended up dying. No cap. But True since story. then, Jeezy done came out some interviews, said you know, said some respectful stuff about. No, nah, because because it was never no disrespect. Yeah, like on, on y'all end. On our end, yeah. was never no disrespect, but the shit got mixed up because Pimp C was trying to get in touch with Jeezy, and but he never had Jeezy number. He had Coach K number, so Pimp C felt like what kind of real nigga give me his manager number? You know, Pimp C was a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I think it was just miscommunication called Jeezy would have gave the number to him. You feel me? Yeah. I think it was just miscommunication and Pimp C just took it up too emotional and too far. But, but Jeezy, like you said, Jeezy never came back disrespecting him or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the love of Bun, though. But off the love of UGK. How can we beef with UGK? Like, that wouldn't even, that wouldn't even sound right. That's crazy. We listen to their music every day just to beef with them. Because we would listen to their shit on the bus and everything. Like, how can you not? So... After that, I mean, it was just that was some bullshit beef. That wasn't yeah. nothing. Cause that shit was over. Man, that's crazy, bro. I ain't never heard that story, man. No, nah, cause that's, nobody knows that story. Nobody knows that story of us going to that club. But ask Jeezy. I mean, ask Jeezy or find a or find a girl BB or find whoever our security was. And it was another nigga from Houston named Black that always fucked with us. I don't know where he at now, but mm -hmm. he was there too, cause he was standing outside our truck, cause he was holding us down too. Yeah. But it was only three of them. Really, the whole crew was about to come. I don't know what happened. It just ended up being me and Jeezy, Security, and BB with 13 pistols. Damn. No lie. But we was going to go about the CTE shit. That's why I'm saying, like, the shit that we did behind the CTE shit is unthinkable.
Man, that's crazy, bro. Oh, yeah, but R.I.P. to Pimp C, man. Yeah, R.I.P. Pimp C. Man, you mentioned something about uh, how you knew that the, the gang stuff was real and making. You know, um, when you went down there and saw like the Crippin and all of that. But prior to that, you was talking about like in Indianapolis in particular, it's more blocks than gangs. Yeah. But I'm thinking y'all close to Gary, y'all close to Chicago. They they known for banging. So how did it, it migrate here? I mean.